Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can set up the curve draw function so that it creates these really nice ornate details. So when I'm talking about ornate detailing, I'm talking about things like this. Some really nice curved shapes that have a really good flow to them and would look really at home on carved stone or ivory, antiques, or if you're looking for something more sci-fi, things like Blood Angel's armour. And while there's multiple ways of doing this, one of the quickest ways is to be able to just draw them on and have them automatically flow and taper the way you want. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. Okay, so to start with, we're going to need a Bezier curve to do this with. I think any curve will work, but I always use a Bezier curve. And at the moment, if I just press Shift and Z, we can see that's in the middle of this. That's neither here nor there. We're actually just going to go into edit mode. I'm going to A to select everything and then X and then delete those vertices because we're not interested in those vertices at all. We want to be able to come to the draw and effectively just draw something out and that make our curve. Now, we're going to control this in two separate places. And this is quite important that we understand where these places are because for one of them, there's a lot of places we can look. The first is that we're going to be looking in here, which is the object data properties. And this is going to allow us to do things like change the thickness, which we call the depth of our curve. So that's going to be quite important. It's also got a lot of other functions as well, but we'll come to that at the end. So we're not going to actually mess around with this until we've looked at the other place we're going to control this with, which is the tool options. Now, these are our tools. We've got them here, but there are many other places we can find this. The first is in the top left hand corner, where if we click here, we've got pretty much most of the same tool options, though it doesn't have things like the workspace or object scatter, which we're not actually going to deal with in this video at all anyway, because it's just not relevant. The other place you can find this if you press the end panel and come to tool is we've got all of these options here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my object data properties here, and then we'll use the tool option in the end panel here to control the tool. Now we're actually going to talk about these pretty much all just going through the active tool and then through the object data properties. But there's going to be a few points where I need to switch between them. We'll just come down to the bevel here and then we'll try to talk through this in a logical manner. But, and this is quite important, before we do that, what we need to understand is that anything we change in the active tool settings, so for example, I'm going to change this taper up to one and one, is that the active tool option will only change what we're drawing from that point. So I can then change this back to zero and zero. And then now this one is not going to be drawn with any taper. Whereas the object data properties will change everything, even if it was drawn earlier. So that's a really important difference to understand. Right, let's A, X and delete those vertices and get on with drawing some really cool detailing. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that when we draw this, it actually appears on top of our object. So if I do, for example, that, it's, well, at a weird angle, it's not coming on the surface. So what we want to do for that is just change where it's got depth to surface. That then gives us some other options, but importantly, it now means that when I draw, it's going to keep the center of our curve on our surface. We can change this with the offset. Notice that this is part of the active tool, so it's not actually gonna change anything from what we've already drawn, but for example, if I now draw another curve, this one now is offset and higher by 0 0.5. Now, what 0 0.5 means is going to be half this thickness, which is controlled by the depth. So if I bring that down to let's say four and draw it again, you'll notice that offset is now different, even though we didn't change it because it's half the total radius, which is here, so 0 0.5 of that radius, at the time that we drew it. So there are some funky interactions with this. Right, let's A and then just delete those vertices out again. Now you can also change that to be an absolute value instead, which means that that won't then affect it or change it. So just something to bear in mind. The other thing we're gonna do is change the taper. Now if I actually just draw a curve here, so we've got something. If I change this taper and put it at one and one, and then draw, you're gonna notice that the whole thing becomes skinnier, even though we haven't changed our depth field. Now that's perfectly fine if you want this, and you can just then increase the depth up and it will increase it for everything. So as long as you know what you're working with, that's totally fine. So if I just come over here, let's go into edit mode and get rid of this, so L and then X and then delete the vertices. As long as you can control that with the depth, that's perfectly fine if you want to do it that way. 
The other way we could do it, if I go to 0 0.4, is we could come to our tool and not set this as one. We could set this to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and then that means when I draw it, the center point, the perfect center, exactly halfway between, will be this depth of four. Because this works as a factor, which means it's as a percentage. Now we can also change this to let's say 0 0.3 and then 0 0.3. That means now 30% at the beginning and the end is going to be thinner. And then the middle 40%, because that's a total of 60, will be at four. So that's an option as well. We can change those. And if we really want to, we can actually change it so that we've got one at, let's say, 0 0.3 and one at 0 0.7. So we now get this happening. So we get a more sharp increase and then a gradual decrease in the size. So that's entirely up to you how this plays out. But do note that if these ever add up to more than one, you're going to get this overall thinning. So I generally keep this if I want this perfect and I've got my depth that I want to have in the middle to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 because then at least I know what my middle point is. The other thing to be aware of, if I just delete all of these, is that these are proportional. So they are effectively a percent. If I draw a long line, that's going to do that. If I draw a short line, it's going to look really odd. So you need to bear that in mind as you draw things out. Now, there are ways to deal with this. This is not actually anything to do with this menu, but let's just come here and draw this out. You can actually control this further. For example, if I come into edit mode and select one of these vertices, or let's say one that starts looking a little bit jagged, you can just press Alt and S and control that thickness that way. So you do have an alternative way of selecting and controlling these points. The other thing you can do is come into the item menu and you've got the radius of that point. And notice this is done as a proportion. So if I change that up to one, that means it will be at our depth of 0 0.4. So again, I could come in and change this one to one as well if I wanted to. And then again, this one I could change to one and have that whole middle bit at 0 0.4. But this is transforming the individual points. That's not, if I come back to my tool, going to change things that I've drawn in the future. So that's more a fine editing tool at the end. But that's pretty much all I want to fiddle around with over here. All of the rest of it, I don't really care about in terms of this. Then we come into our object data properties and the things that we want to be able to change there. Now, to demonstrate a lot of this, I'm actually going to draw another curve. And what I'm gonna do is go into object mode and then shade this flat. Now, this does have an annoying feature that if I then go and draw in another curve, this one is then shaded smooth, so you kind of have to keep on doing this. And I haven't found a good way of just keeping it constantly shaded flat. There's nothing down here that allows you to do that, so it's a little bit tedious. But anyway, for 3D printing, I like to keep this shaded flat because it means that I can see exactly what I'm doing to it. So this is going to be a bit more basic in terms of what these controls do before we go on to some more complex parts in terms of what you want this to look like. So the first thing is our resolution. Now our resolution, if I just bring this down to four, is probably a little bit easier to see. That is the amount of segments between one point and another. So we've got one, two, three, and then our fourth. So that's quite important to control in terms of our smoothness. I generally like to have that cranked up pretty high if I'm using this for 3D printing. Now, the other thing we can control is the resolution around the curve, and that is done by the bevel and we've got this set as round, and at the moment the resolution is four, meaning that we've got for each quarter four points. Now what that means is if I bring this down to zero, we get a really nice pointed looking curve, and I find this one of the nicest things to use for this. The only issue with this is that if you're gonna be 3D printing, sometimes this just curves or comes into it a little bit too subtly, or I want it to have a little bit more height, in which case we can come to the geometry and we can just add an extrude, and that will add a little bit of height to this as well. So I find that a really nice compromise between something that's gonna have a clear deep edge, where if you're using something like a dry brush or a wash, it's gonna fill into that quite nicely because it's got a hard edge to go against, but still having this nice point to it. You can also do things if you want to by having a profile, so you can change things like how sharp this is gonna be. So we can go to the profile, and change the shape of this. But to do that, we are gonna to have to up the resolution, something like that. So this will give you a bit more of an extreme shape. 
and you can change this around as you want. I've done a video on profile curves, so you can fiddle around with that how you want. I'm just gonna deal with this being round at the moment. Let's change that back to zero, so we've got this nice shape. So they're generally the controls that you're gonna to want to use on this, and that allows you to draw in these shapes, again, remembering that we're gonna to have to shade these flat each time we want to do that. Now, one final control that we want to be able to bring in is that sometimes this has a bit of a sharp transition on each of these edges. So let's have a look at how we can control that. The first is you'll notice that these angles aren't equal either side, or I should say these handles there and there have a different distance from the center. We can just press V and automatic, and that actually solves a little bit of that problem. So again, V and automatic, and then we can still move things around if we want to, or in this instance, I'm actually probably going to control and X that to delete it out and it will get a better shape. The other thing that we can do if we want to, oops, I think I did that too much, is that we can use the trick that I showed earlier of Alt and S to shrink those points down or expand them in size depending on what you want until we get something that we notice flows quite nicely or we can increase the size of each one. So that's our fine editing after we do our drawings. Another thing that feels worth mentioning just before I do the final point to finish on is that if you are using a tablet, you can use this use pressure setting, which will affect the curve radius, which is a lot of fun and gives some really nice fine control. And if I grab my hue on tablet here, you can see how I can push down or let up to change the thickness of what this curve's gonna be. And that gives you the ability to make some really, really cool different designs. The final thing I wanted to show, which is quite nice for animation, is just how I did that part at the beginning, where the curves gradually appear. That's also in the object data properties. For that, we just come down to the start and end mapping, and you can control, say, for example, the beginning to the end. Again, this is a proportion, so it will just gradually create this, depending on the length of the curve, and then you've got that working out. So if you want to do that animation, that's how you do that as well. As always, I hope you found that video useful. There are other things that we can add to this as well, for example, so we might have a curve that twists out into multiple points at the end, but that's a bit of a different technique, so I think that's a topic for another video, if you'd be interested in that. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel any further, we've also got a Patreon page, and any help on there is always really appreciated. Have a great day, guys.